do you think of the PlayStation 5 so far? That's a pretty interesting question to ask. While we're already four years, four years, what the hell, into the console's life, it's not a stretch to suggest that it's struggled to massively distance itself from the PS4 so far, thanks to a bunch of reasons. Even though PS5-only games are becoming more common, we're still seeing a ton of cross-generation releases in 2024. Has the ninth generation really kicked off yet? Make no mistake though, the PS5 is a fantastic console, and its controller is arguably one of the best controllers ever made. We're seeing countless fantastic games released every week, almost far too many for those with seemingly endless backlogs, but which are the best of the best on the console? Let's find out by delving into the best PS5 games that you should be playing. Just a couple of quick rules to go over first though. We're not including games that launched on PS4 but were ported to PS5 later because that's so extremely boring and nobody needs to hear any more praise for The Witcher 3, GTA 5 or Ghost of Tsushima or any of them. Sorry, literally every other list on the first page of Google. And even though it would technically be eligible because it's a remake, we're going to exclude The Last of Us Part 1 because it's now basically been the same game across three PlayStation generations, and its story has also been adapted into a TV show. Nobody needs to say anything else about the original Last of Us for a long time. And I say this as a pretty massive fan of the game. We're also only including one game per franchise just to give more games a chance to shine. If you've just got yourself a shiny new PlayStation 5 or are just looking for something to hoover up all your spare time like THQ Nordic hoovering up bad business decisions, here are the best PS5 games that you should check out. Number 25, Astro's Playroom. Honestly, there's a massive temptation to rank this absolute trip down PlayStation memory lane even higher than this. It's just pure unbridled joy. Astro's Playroom is a platformer designed to showcase what the PlayStation 5 is capable of, and there really aren't that many better tech demos in the history of gaming. It looks and sounds amazing, the nods to PlayStation mascots are basically that Leo meme over and over and over again, and it makes very good use of all the DualSense's many awesome features. It really makes you feel like you're Spider-Man. Wait, that's, that's not quite right. However, it is quite short, which does make sense considering that it's basically a free packing title. If you have a spare couple of hours and want to buff up your Platinum collection, Astro's Playroom is a real, real gem. Make another one, Sony, you cowards. Number 24, Armored Core 6. It took a long time for core players, that's what they're called, don't look that up, to get a new Armored Core game. FromSoft has become very busy in recent years with their various captivating blends of medieval masochism, but it's their mech masochism, mechochism, that a lot of people crave instead. Prayers were finally answered with the almost surprising release of Armored Core 6, which took the classic Armored Core formula and modernised it without compromising any of what made it such a cult favourite. While this does mean that Armored Core 6 isn't going to be for everyone, those who jive with its nice blend of deep mech customization, intense combat making huge things explode and general suffering will find one of their new faves. We got a job for you, play this game. Let's not leave it another, like, 10 years until the next one, eh? We've got another job for you as well. Join our giveaway! Comment 31k gang down below for the chance to win a free Steam key. We'll draw a winner next week. Number 24, The Latro. It always makes me feel like Brad Pitt and Inglourious Bastards saying that. Bellatro. The three most addictive things on the planet are poker, roguelikes, and watching that bit in the mist when the annoying radical woman gets shut up to a permanent end. Unfortunately, you can't do the latter in a video game yet, but you sure can enjoy the former in a massively addictive indie called Bellatro. While definitely not a game for those who pretty much exclusively want their console games to be cinematic spectacles, Bellatro has better gameplay than most of them. 
a fiendishly simple card game where you build your deck up until they get more and more cursed, allowing you to build all manner of seriously mental synergies. But Lacro gets its hooks into you within about uh, four and a half minutes. <laughs> The best thing about Velatro is that you don't really have to like poker in order to get something out of it, or even card games in general. If Slay the Spire was like an FDA disapproved substance for you when the game came to PlayStation Plus, Velatro is like something cooked up by Umbrella. Gambling. Sometimes it's good for you, actually. Number 22, A Plague Tale Requiem. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's got rats in it, put more rats in it. While you probably couldn't make that into a catchy slogan for a t-shirt, A Plague Tale Requiem takes a lot of what made the first game, Innocence, such a surprise hit and just amps it up. While the novelty of seeing thousands of rats on screen isn't quite the same the second time around, and the gameplay generally feels the same. What we have here is still a grotesquely beautiful AA game that almost feels slightly forgotten about already. That's a gigantic shame, as Requiem's second journey with Amicia and Hugo tells one of the most compelling, devastating stories on PS5. If you love The Last of Us but wish it had more actual rats and not just this absolute nightmare to use as really clever puzzles and also unfortunately eat your eyes out on occasion, A Plague Tale Requiem is worth a slingshot. Because she uses a slingshot, get it? Sorry, I didn't mean to be so cheesy. Number 21, Horizon Forbidden West. Don't let Forbidden West's placement here put you off. It's a fantastic game and a very solid follow-up to Zero Dawn that may just be the best looking game of all time. Pretty much every single screenshot is worth framing and hanging in the Louvre. The same unique blend of Monster Hunter meets Metal Gear Solid 5 can be found here, with Aloy having all kinds of wild gadgets and gizmo to help her take down robot Godzillas and its post-post-apocalyptic vibe may have been aped a few times over the years, but Horizon's vibe remains distinctly its own. Forbidden West then finds its way lower on this list for just not being quite as essential or fresh as the previous game, with some, at times, kind of pretty bland quest design and open-world filler. However, if you're searching for a giant, beautiful world to ride around on, a big metal bird in for like 100 hours, you won't do much better than this. Number 20, Stray. Stray is the kind of game we don't really get enough of these days. A cinematic double A experience that is perfectly paced for people who have way too much shit to do all the time. As big as your backlog may be, you can definitely make some room for a very cool and very neat little cat. In Stray, you play as a lost cat who winds up in a strange robot commune under the planet's surface, with no humans in sight. In terms of gameplay, Stray is about as straightforward as puzzle platformers get. However, that's really just kind of refreshing. Stay accomplishes what it sets out to do, which is to let you play as a cat and demand pets, and doesn't overcomplicate itself for no reason to increase engagement times or any other metric that most modern games use as gospel. Stray is a charming tale of friendship and giving cats adorable harnesses. Sometimes that's all you need. Number 19, Inscription. From a cute game about cats to a genuine descent into madness, but with cards. On paper, well, technically cardboard, card games can be quite uninteresting, almost too basic for some, but Inscription basically takes every card game convention and makes LSD tabs out of them. When you wake up in a stranger's cabin, you're forced to play a seemingly rigged card game with your captor, except the cards are telling you what to do as well. 
and the cabin itself houses its fair share of weird and wonderful secrets. Inscription is a game that's impossible to discuss at any length without spoiling any of its many brilliant surprises, but if you like Pokemon but wish it was about 99% more nightmarish, Inscription is one of the most devilishly unique and innovative games you can play on PlayStation 5. Keep your eye out for this one on sale. <coughs> Number 18, Sifu. You know a game is a pretty damn good one when it's old boy send up is only one of about a dozen brilliant ass action sequences. In Sifu, the story is that old martial arts classic Chestnut. Your father has been moided and you must set out on a quest to get revenge on the gang responsible. With nothing to aid you but a strange amulet with the ability to keep you coming back from the dead, you must master kung fu through failure over and over and over again. You see, what's brilliant about Sifu is that each time you die and are brought back, you also age, which basically changes up your abilities and even your playstyle. However, age too much and you will basically reverse Benjamin Button yourself, read, die, before you can complete your quest for vengeance, meaning you will have to start all over again. Sifu is a brutal game that at times can feel like it's aging you in real life. However, its fantastic aesthetic, sea deep moveset potential, and satisfying fwang when you hit some idiot with a baseball bat will keep you coming back for more again and again. Number 17, Returnal. Speaking of punishingly difficult time loop games in which you die again and again and again, what was developers beef for a while there, eh? Here's Returnal. You play as Selene, an astronaut stranded in a loop on a seemingly ancient Lovecraftian planet. Released at a time when people were still bulking at the increased price tag for PS5 games, it doesn't feel like Returnal quite hit the audience it deserved. That's a shame, because Returnal deserves all of the love. While bullet hell roguelikes in which you're facing off against something dark and a little bit sticky are often a hard sell for a mainstream crowd, Returnal's blend of chaotic action and one more room progression is hard to resist for those who want to get a little bit weird. If you loved Risk of Rain 2 but need a bit more cosmic horror, Returnal is the perfect PS5 game for you. And now, thanks to Housemark's post-launch updates, you can now drag a friend along to share in some of the sticky, sticky misery. Number 16, Tekken 8. There's few bigger fighting game franchises out there than Tekken. We can think of two that compare, those being Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, but in the 3D fighting game space, Tekken is the undisputed king. Despite the series starting out life in the Japanese arcades, the Tekken franchise has long been synonymous with the PlayStation brand, becoming a core part of the PS1's identity during the console's formative years. Now, with Tekken 8 on PS5, it's not only an amazing fighting game, but among the best games on the entire arse platform too. A continuation of one of the longest running video game narratives in history, which is quite the accomplishment, Tekken 8 continues the long running tradition of dads and sons, followed by a roster of weirdos and freaks beating the sh out of each other. The story mode is among the best in the genre, but the arcade quests mode and new suite of tutorial and training options should help new players find their footing when trying to win the King of Iron Fist Tournament 8. Who do you main in Tekken 8? Be sure to let us know down below. Number 15, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. It's over! For anyone who played the original games when they debuted on PS2 or even their PS3 releases, watching the Yakuza slash Like a Dragon series blossom into one of Sega's crown jewels has to be a gratifying feeling. Vindication in a bottle, almost. Since the release of Yakuza Like a Dragon, the names do get confusing sometimes, the series has really exploded in popularity, and the most recent instalment, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, might just be the best RPG the series has to offer. 
Some might prefer the story to the previous game which introduced new hero Ichiban Kasuga, but for longtime fans, the care and attention shown to longtime protagonist Kazuma Kiryu is fantastic. As for the gameplay, the turn-based combat has been massively improved to give players more options and control during a fight instead of just picking moves from a menu. Plus, they gave Kiryu the ability to just skip turn-based combat entirely and start whooping ass like the old days. That alone moves Infinite Wealth up the rankings by at least a couple of places. Number 14, It Takes Two. Sorry, yeah, we don't like violence! No. It takes two. It takes one brilliant game to make you feel this bad for a toy elephant. Released in 2021 at arguably the perfect time for it, It Takes Two is pretty much the best couch co-op game in recent memory. It's a game you feel people are going to look back on fondly years from now, much with the same reverence as people do when they talk about screen cheating in GoldenEye. With one player controlling Mei and another controlling Cody, you and a friend are playing as basically disappointing parents who find themselves shrunk down as dolls. You must work together to navigate your now gargantuan family home, taking part in some of the best minigames ever that never settle on one genre for long. Even if your co-op partner isn't much of a gamer, It Takes Two is the kind of game that generates unforgettable memory after unforgettable memory. Best of all, you can also play it online with someone else, with only one of you needing a copy of the game. Free is often a very good deal. Number 13, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. When your shiny new console has a bunch of cool new gimmicks, you need the games to sell players on them. Astro's Playroom was the ideal way to pitch the DualSense, and Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart was the perfect showcase for the console's SSD. Introducing new characters Rivet and Kit to go along with the titular duo, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is a dimension-hopping adventure that feels like a greatest hits voyage for the PlayStation brand. Any game that features Jack and Daxter in the 2020s, even if it's in a very brief cameo, is more than an alright game by us. Gameplay-wise, Rift Apart is more of the series you know and love, except with some more dimension-based puzzling and a new set of protagonists to play as. Ratchet and Clank is definitely a bit of a comfort platformer that won't stretch your cranium too hard, and it's still just as magic on PlayStation 5, with it basically being playable Pixar. Kyo, look at that! Whoa. Number 12, Gran Turismo 7. Though it's had many, many pretenders over the years, even from within the Sony umbrella, rest in peace Drive Club, the people just weren't ready for you yet, not many racing game franchises have been able to match Polyphony's sheer love of cars with Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo 7 isn't necessarily the most modern-minded racer on the market, as it doesn't really have a lot of gimmicks to pull in the casuals, but it doesn't really need them. This is just driving done really well, with you taking your Mini Cooper and upgrading it over and over again until it's basically a Nissan Skyline in Too Fast Too Furious. While the level of microtransactions for a full price game is less than ideal, and yeah the Gran Turismo Cafe is almost too twee in how it governs your progression, if you're after old school racing with a current gen lick of lovely lickable paint, Gran Turismo 7 is the way to go. And if you can manage a PSVR 2 headset and a rig, it's a damn sight cheaper than renting out Silverstone for the weekend. Number 11, Dead Space. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, and while we were all very happy to see the series return, apparently Absence also made us forget that Dead Space is very bad for your heart. You see, Dead Space is one of the scariest games of all time. This is something it makes you very aware of after about 5 minutes aboard the USG Ishimura as Spider-Men, not the good ones either, scuttle out of every creaking pipe in order to turn you into a kebab. Though the first game still holds up pretty well today even if played on PS3, this remake improves upon horror royalty in basically every imaginable way. The viscera is extremely visceral, the improvements to just getting around this hulking thing of space metal are very much appreciated, and the sound design, poor. The sound design is pretty much why headphones were invented. 
is a super short pitch for playing Dead Space on PS5, stomping a mud hole into Lovecraft Mutants in 4K resolution. Lovely. Number 10. Demon's Souls The slightly awkward yet still deeply fatally charming cousin to Dark Souls, Bluepoint's remake of a PS3 cult classic that spawned 1,000 think pieces, was one of the best options to showcase the power of the PS5. Compare it side by side with the original and you will see just how far we've come. Visit the Kingdom of Boletaria, which is beset by traditional From Software decay and general bad stuff. You know the score by now. There's a lot of interesting things going on under the hood of Demon's Souls, including the rather complicated but brilliant tendencies, your job getting harder every time you die, and its uncanny ability to make you hate bridges. Demon's Souls is very faithful to the original, almost to a fault when it comes to attracting newcomers who've maybe been drawn into a life of masochism by Elden Ring. Demon's Souls is relentless, but that just makes its victories all that sweeter. Demon's Souls is a very ambitious, daring game even two generations on, and probably for any generation still to come. Number 9. Alan Wake 2 This will put a smile back on your face, my dear. Sorry? Ah! Oh, no sense of hope. It's still almost surreal that Alan Wake 2 even came out. A franchise which is seemingly completely resistant to making money got a big budget sequel that's one of the best, most inventive horror games of all time, and not enough people give it its flowers. It's a pity, but Alan Wake 2's complete disinterest in appealing to absolutely everyone is what makes it so damn interesting. Could you imagine if Alan had to collect 40 light bulbs in order to upgrade his frown speed, for instance? No, Alan Wake 2 is a pretty damn unique ride, a bizarre gonzo mixture of a little bit of Resident Evil's remakes, a big old lashing of Twin Peaks, and a nice heap of art film. It's also a musical for a bit, which somehow feels quite restrained by Sam Lake's standards. So yeah, while the combat perhaps isn't as fulfilling as it could have been, and the original ending is a bit flat, it's fair to say, games like Alan Wake 2 are absolutely worth treasuring for as long as we're allowed them. They won't be making them like this for much longer. Number 8. Marvel's Spider-Man 2 this whole blizzard hunt ends now. Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is everything you loved about the first two Insomniac Spider-Man games, but just dialed all the way the hell up. Double the protagonist, double the speed, double the cool factor of Spider-Cat. With Peter and Miles both working together to keep New York City safe, Craven the Hunter's machinations and a rather strange symbiote look to tear them apart. While Spider-Man 2 is iterative rather than innovative in a lot of ways, Insomniac already created a formula that works wonderfully, and it's at its best here. The ability to swap between Miles and Peter at will is the perfect selling point for the PS5's SSD, while every second of the game's many sumptuous cutscenes show where all that money went. All that money, and no pocket change for knack free. Cowards. Cowards! Sure, the story has a lot, lot going on at some points, and the constant distraction from the Spider-Men themselves upsets the tempo a fair bit, but Marvel Spider-Man 2 is the kitchen sink of superhero games, and deserves all its recognition. Number 7, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Think you can stop me? <laughs> <laughs> Square Enix saw that you liked the first entry in the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy and simply went more. Those who didn't like the action RPG switch and timey-wimey story stuff probably won't be convinced here either, but Rebirth is a reminder that Square Enix still has some magic left in the tank. In Rebirth, Cloud and the gang venture outside of Midgar, which can only mean one thing. Segways. It can be easy to see the conflict with Sephiroth and Shinra and think Rebirth is going to be a very serious ass game, but it can also be incredibly goofy in the best of ways. Rebirth also possesses the most interesting regions to explore in any Final Fantasy game to date, with a nice amount of verticality and a few lessons cribbed from the likes of Breath of the Wild. There's even a nice amount of minigames here for those who love their Yakuza. Chuck in an almost overwhelming amount of side content, a seriously affable cast, and some combat flourishes that take nicely from Tales of Arise, and you've got a pretty compelling package. Let's just hope they clear up that ending a little bit down the road. 
Somebody please get Nomura under control, please. Number six, Hades. It takes a special kind of game to make failure not feel like, well, failure. While it is gutting to lose your Hades run as you're nearing escape from the underworld, returning back to its depths is just another chance to get to know some of gaming's most likeable ever characters. You play as Zagreus, son of the titular Hades, who finds himself wanting to escape from basically captivity and discover more about his long lost mother. After his dad cancels his PlayStation Plus subscription, Zag plots his escape and then dies, again and again. Hades can be a pretty challenging roguelite, especially without a lot of very necessary upgrades and unlocks, but never an unfair one. There are plenty of ways you can totally break the game if you get your builds just right, and having the whole screen be like a violent version of Fantavision is always fulfilling. However, it's not the combat that's the main attraction here, it's the story. Hades has a frankly staggering amount of dialogue, but none of it bores and all of it serves a purpose, even if that purpose is to get you to fall in love with a sociopath. Yes, I am once again asking Megara to leave me bound in a fridge in a forest for a whole week. Number 5, Hell Divers 2. Throwing grenade. Never in a million years would I have thought that Helldivers 2 would end up being half as good, innovative and outright democratic as it actually is, and I really enjoyed playing the first game on my Vita, rest in peace. Taking the top down action firmly behind the expectant corpse known as your character instead, Helldivers 2 takes what made the first game so unique, makes it more cinematic and basically prints money with it. On the surface, pushing back hordes of apparently communist bugs and bots isn't very different to the hordes of Left 4 Dead imitators over the years. However, just like Valve's iconic co-op shooter, the brilliance of Helldivers 2 comes in the details. The little things that showcase a game made with love, not just to cash in on a trend. Helldivers 2 is also just a very funny, goofy-ass game. Come for the opportunity to blow your friends up with a nuke, stay for the hilarious satire, non-predatory progression and absolute goosebump inducing soundtrack. And then blow your mates up with a nuke again anyway. Number 4, Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 didn't even really need a remake, but Capcom has been on such a tear with the franchise lately that they decided to make one just because they could. And what do you know, but they created yet another all-time whopper. Resident Evil 4's 2023 remake brings in a few obvious mechanical and visual changes, while also tweaking some things in the story to make it a little darker than the kinda pulpy original. Remarkably, it doesn't diminish the original game in any way. Both versions of Leon's unfortunate Thomas Cook package deal gone wrong stand on their own. There's a lot to absolutely adore about this new vision of Resident Evil 4, from Leon and Ashley's excellent chemistry together to its amazing aesthetic attention to detail, wild raft of unlockables and the ability to deflect a chainsaw with your dad's Swiss army knife that he keeps in the forbidden drawer of man. Every dad has one of them. Yes, the villains probably aren't quite as iconic this time out, but Resident Evil 4 creates its own fair share of iconic moments thanks to its dynamic, emergent, wonderful nonsense. Plus you get to roundhouse kick people in glorious 4K. It more than does the job until the next Marvel vs Capcom game. Whenever that is. Number 3, God of War, Ragnarok. You insult me oh. holding back like this. Oh. Oh. 2018's God of War proved that change can be a very good thing, and while Ragnarok isn't massively different from its predecessor, being similar to one of the greatest action games of all time certainly isn't a bad thing. Ragnarok is a more ambitious game than its predecessor, with a frankly incredible scale both in terms of spectacle and narrative. Much like Resident Evil 4's remake, Kratos having primary functions other than ripping limbs off of things doesn't hurt the previous game's legacies at all. It just improves the legacy of the franchise as a whole. And the action here is kinetic and chaotic in all the right ways, with the synergies with all of Kratos' gear, including that amazing spear, offering so many different ways to approach fights. 
Hack and Slash diehards may still prefer the originals, but there's something to be said for lining up all your cooldowns to finally unleash hell. There's no denying though that the narrative sags at a few points like Jesus Christ I never want to sit on that weird cow ever again in my lifetime, but the highest highs of Ragnarok's story are a pretty good reminder that it's now movies that should start emulating games. Chuck in a free story focused roguelike DLC and you have one of the most compelling tales of redemption and the power of change on your PlayStation 5. Number 2. Baldur's Gate Free it's hard to distill the massive success of Baldur's Gate 3 down to one key thing. Is it the level of actual role playing in an RPG? The sheer depth of its mechanics and the intricacies of its character relationships? Or is it because you can shag a bear? Yes, it's probably the latter, but all of those other things definitely don't hurt either. While the broad strokes of Baldur's Gate 3 are the same for everyone, bug in brain, brain turning to bug, yada yada, that old chestnut, everything that you do between point A and point B in the story is almost miraculously your call. Want to roleplay as the Dungeons and Dragons character you've always dreamed of, but don't have the table, board game, or four to five friends past the age of 30 to play with? Your prayers have been answered. It's fair to say that not everyone will jive with Baldur's Gate 3, particularly those that have grown accustomed to more action in their RPGs. However, Larian's mastery of all things turn-based is on full display here, and there's plenty of fun to be had with exploring dungeons and definitely not safe scumming your way to glory. If you need any more convincing, PS Plus subscribers get to enjoy a two-hour trial of this absolute behemoth of a game as part of their subscription. Just don't get mad at us when you spend those two hours solely on creating your character. And number one, Elden Ring. Elden Ring is the absolute culmination of every painful lesson from software has given their players over the last 15 years of medieval masochism with a side salad of poison swamps. It's a game so bloody good that it's basically ruined every other open world game for me since I first played it. You play as the Tarnished, a warrior who awakens in a decaying world called the Lands Between beneath a glowing gold tree. Fairly standard from software stuff then. It's not long before you suffer your first death of no doubt hundreds, and are then set loose on Limgrave in one of the most eye-opening moments in video games since Mario first started doing backflips. Even people who don't usually get along with From Software games will probably enjoy Elden Ring, as it's far more beginner friendly without sacrificing any of that notorious challenge. The sheer depth of build options means that you can probably unga bunga your way through even the toughest of challenges eventually, while the wild breadth of the map means that you can always go off and level up elsewhere. It also doesn't hurt that save points are no longer a mile away from bosses. And how about that world building, eh? As absolutely impenetrable as the Elden Ring lore is for anyone without a wiki to hand, the minutiae here is almost hard to believe. Nothing means nothing, and everything means something. And the open world itself is a total joy to discover, a far cry from, well, the far cry checklists of so many modern western RPGs. You usually just end up discovering a new horrific way to die, but still. Even if you don't think Elden Ring is to your tastes, you owe it to yourself to at least give it a try on your PlayStation 5. Fair warning, there's a boss here that may actually make you throw your PS5 out of the window. We are of course talking about Soldier of Godric. So that was our video going over the very bestest PS5 games is on your PS5. That's that's an outro for sure. What was too high? What was too low? Be sure to let us know down below. I've been Jimmy for Cultured Vultures and thank you for watching.